In Nexus, Yuval Noah Harari delves into the complex interplay between technology, human history, and the future of humanity. Harari offers profound insights into how technological advancements, particularly in artificial intelligence, bioengineering, and data science, are shaping our very existence. But what does this mean for the future? And how does our past illuminate the path ahead? This is a story not only of the future of technology, but also of human choices, morality, and the risks that lie on the horizon if we don't navigate this evolving landscape with care. Harari's exploration of human evolution through the lens of technology begins by drawing a clear line between humanity's cognitive revolution and our capacity to create tools that dramatically transform our environment. But it's not just about the external tools. It's the way technology shapes human relationships, societies, and even our consciousness. Take, for example, the transition from hunter-gatherer societies to agricultural ones. This wasn't just a change in how we sourced food, but a shift in the very structure of our society. Communities grew larger, hierarchies were established, and with them came the need for more complex social rules. The agricultural revolution, fueled by tools like the plow and irrigation systems, led to the establishment of civilizations. Harari points out that humans didn't just use technology. Technology used humans, shaping societies and laying the foundation for everything from kings and empires to religion and law. This theme of technology as an active force is central to the narrative. Harari then takes us through the Industrial Revolution, which he argues was perhaps the most dramatic example of technology reshaping human existence. Here he brings up the story of the Luddites, workers in England who feared losing their jobs to the new mechanized loom. But Harari doesn't just tell the story of their rebellion. He goes deeper into the psychological impact. These workers weren't just afraid of losing their jobs. They feared losing their place in society, their purpose, and their identity. This fear of being made obsolete by technology, Harari argues, is a recurring theme in human history and is more relevant today than ever. Fast forward to the digital age, where the same fear re-emerges in the face of automation and artificial intelligence. Harari highlights the 21st century's version of the Luddite dilemma. Workers across industries, from truck drivers to accountants, fear that AI and machines will replace them. The result, as Harari explains, is a growing anxiety not just about employment, but about our very role in society. This fear goes beyond economics. It's existential. If machines can think, decide, and create, what's left for us? This, Harari suggests, is the question we must grapple with as we move deeper into the age of AI. Next, Harari shifts the focus to the invisible forces that are increasingly controlling our world. Algorithms and data. He argues that while most people think of algorithms as tools for convenience, like the recommendation systems that suggest the next movie on Netflix or the next product on Amazon, their power goes far beyond that. Algorithms are not just helping us make decisions. In many ways, they're making decisions for us, often without our conscious awareness. One of Harari's most compelling examples is the role of algorithms in shaping political outcomes. He draws from the 2016 U.S. presidential election, where targeted data mining and psychographic profiling enabled political campaigns to deliver highly personalized messages to voters. Harari explains that by harvesting data from social media platforms like Facebook, campaigns could identify individuals' emotional triggers and manipulate them with tailored ads designed to exploit those emotions. For instance, individuals prone to anxiety about immigration might receive ads that stoke their fears, while others more concerned about the economy were targeted with different messaging. This micro-targeting, Harari suggests, fundamentally changed the way political campaigns operate. No longer was the goal to sway large groups of people. The new strategy was to individually manipulate voters based on their personal data. But Harari doesn't stop there. He digs into the long-term implications of this shift. If algorithms can predict and manipulate our behavior, what does that mean for our freedom? Are we truly making choices, or are we simply reacting to stimuli carefully designed to push us in certain directions? Harari cautions that as algorithms grow more sophisticated, the line between free will and algorithmic manipulation becomes increasingly blurred. 
He urges us to consider the ethical implications of a world where our thoughts, desires, and decisions are shaped by unseen forces. In a real-world application of this concept, Harari discusses China's social credit system, a program where citizens' behavior is constantly monitored and their social score determines everything from their ability to travel to their access to loans. This dystopian use of data is not some far-off science fiction. It's happening now. Harari uses this example to highlight the dangers of giving too much power to algorithms, especially when it comes to governing human behavior. One of the most exciting and perhaps alarming sections of Nexus is Harari's discussion of bioengineering and human enhancement. Here, Harari introduces us to the cutting-edge world of genetic modification, where scientists are no longer just treating diseases, but actively working to enhance human capabilities. This isn't just about curing genetic disorders. It's about creating a new kind of human, one that's smarter, stronger, and potentially longer-lived. Harari gives us a vivid example with the story of the CRISPR twins, two babies born in China who were genetically edited to be resistant to HIV. This real-life case sparked a global debate about the ethics of human enhancement. Harari uses this story to illustrate the potential of bioengineering, but also to raise concerns about its long-term implications. What happens if only the wealthy can afford to enhance their children? Will we create a society where the rich have superior intelligence, physical abilities, and health, while the poor are left behind? To bring this concept closer to home, Harari draws on the history of eugenics, a movement in the early 20th century that sought to improve the genetic quality of the human population. While today we view eugenics as deeply unethical, Harari warns that modern bioengineering could lead to a new form of eugenics, one that's driven not by ideology, but by market forces. As parents seek to give their children every advantage in an increasingly competitive world, the temptation to enhance their offspring may become irresistible. But Harari doesn't stop at genetic enhancement. He takes us into the future of brain-computer interfaces, where humans could potentially merge with machines. This technology, still in its infancy, could one day allow us to enhance our cognitive abilities by connecting our brains directly to computers. Harari paints a picture of a world where humans and AI are not separate entities, but intertwined in a symbiotic relationship. This raises profound questions about what it means to be human. If our thoughts, memories, and identities can be uploaded into the cloud, where does the human end and the machine begin? Harari devotes significant attention to the moral and ethical implications of artificial intelligence. He argues that AI is not just a tool, but a force that could fundamentally change the nature of human decision-making. One of the most disturbing examples Harari provides is the development of autonomous weapons, machines that can make life and death decisions without human intervention. Harari explains that autonomous weapons are already in development, and some have been deployed in conflict zones. These machines, guided by AI, are capable of identifying and eliminating targets without a human pulling the trigger. Harari raises the terrifying question, what happens when machines control warfare? In a world where robots decide who lives and who dies, the moral responsibility for those decisions becomes murky. Can we hold a machine accountable for a war crime? And if not, who is responsible for the actions of autonomous weapons? Harari then draws a parallel to self-driving cars, which are already being programmed to make ethical decisions. For example, if a self-driving car must choose between hitting a pedestrian or risking the lives of its passengers, how should it decide? Harari explains that these ethical dilemmas are not just theoretical, they are happening now. Companies developing self-driving cars are grappling with these questions and the answers could have profound implications for how we view morality in the age of machines. As Harari moves forward, he explores the concept of digital empires. Giant corporations like Google, Amazon, Facebook, and Alibaba that are not only shaping our economies, but increasingly acting like sovereign states. He presents a compelling case that these companies are more powerful than many governments. They have vast amounts of wealth, influence over billions of people, in control over the data that drives our economies. Harari uses the example of Amazon's influence over the global retail market. With its cutting-edge logistics, massive data centers, and powerful algorithms, 
Amazon has redefined how we shop, work, and even interact with the world. Harari explains that Amazon isn't just a company, it's an ecosystem. It's the infrastructure for thousands of other businesses that depend on its platform to sell their products. This level of dominance gives Amazon unprecedented leverage, and Harari raises concerns about the potential dangers of concentrating so much power in the hands of a few corporations. He also points out that governments are struggling to regulate these digital empires because they operate across borders in a digital realm that traditional laws often don't cover. For instance, Harari highlights the European Union's efforts to impose privacy regulations through the General Data Protection Regulation, GDPR. While this was a significant step forward, Harari explains that even the GDPR is limited in its ability to truly curb the power of tech giants. Companies like Facebook and Google have the resources to navigate around these regulations or simply shift their operations to more lenient jurisdictions. In a fascinating turn, Harari also explores how these digital empires are shifting global power dynamics. Traditionally, global power was defined by military and economic might, but in the 21st century, data has become the most valuable resource. Harari argues that nations with the most access to data and the ability to analyze and utilize it are the ones that will dominate in the future. He uses China's growing influence as an example. By investing heavily in AI, quantum computing, and 5G technology, China is positioning itself as a global leader in the digital age. Harari cautions that this shift in power will have profound implications for global geopolitics, particularly in the rivalry between the U.S. and China. One of the most pressing concerns Harari addresses in Nexus is the future of work. As AI, automation, and robotics advance, many jobs that were once done by humans are being taken over by machines. Harari points to industries like manufacturing, transportation, and even healthcare, where robots and AI are replacing human workers at an alarming rate. But Harari doesn't just focus on blue-collar jobs. He argues that white-collar professions are also at risk. For example, in the legal field, AI is already being used to sift through vast amounts of data and provide legal advice, potentially making many junior lawyers redundant. Similarly, in the medical field, AI systems like IBM's Watson can diagnose diseases and recommend treatments with incredible accuracy, potentially replacing doctors in certain areas of healthcare. Harari draws a real-world parallel to the rise of the gig economy, where companies like Uber and Lyft have turned workers into freelancers stripping away many of the benefits and job security traditionally associated with employment. While these platforms create opportunities for short-term work, Harari explains that they also represent a broader trend toward the commodification of labor, where workers are increasingly treated as disposable. He warns that as automation continues to advance, we could face a future where large segments of the population are unemployable because machines can do their jobs more efficiently. Harari introduces the idea of a useless class, a group of people who, through no fault of their own, are unable to find work because the economy no longer needs their skills. This raises profound ethical and economic questions. If millions of people are out of work, how will they support themselves? And if they can't find meaning through work, what will give their lives purpose? Harari doesn't offer simple solutions to this problem, but he does suggest that we need to rethink our relationship with work. In a world where machines do most of the labor, humans may need to find new sources of meaning and fulfillment beyond their jobs. This could mean embracing lifelong learning, creative pursuits, or even redefining what we consider work. A major theme in Nexus is the growing competition between humans and AI. Harari draws an analogy to the Cold War arms race where the U.S. and the Soviet Union competed to build the most powerful nuclear weapons. Today, he argues, we're in the midst of a new arms race, but this time it's a race to develop the most advanced AI. Harari uses the example of AlphaGo, the AI developed by Google's DeepMind, which famously defeated the world champion at the ancient Chinese game of Go, a game far more complex than chess. This victory was a watershed moment for AI demonstrating that machines could not only replicate human intelligence, but surpass it in certain areas. But Harari warns that the rise of AI poses significant risks. One of the most immediate dangers is in the realm of cybersecurity. 
As more aspects of our lives move online, the potential for AI-driven cyber attacks grows. Harari explains that AI can be used to hack systems far more efficiently than any human, and it can also adapt in real time, making it incredibly difficult to defend against. He also explores the ethical implications of AI in warfare, the development of autonomous weapons, which can make life and death decisions without human intervention, represents a profound shift in the nature of conflict. Harari explains that these weapons are already in use and their potential to cause harm on a massive scale is terrifying. He draws a parallel to the invention of nuclear weapons, which forever changed the landscape of global conflict. Just as we develop treaties and safeguards to prevent the use of nuclear weapons, Harari argues that we need similar safeguards for AI. But beyond the immediate dangers, Harari raises a more philosophical question. What happens if AI surpasses human intelligence in every domain? This scenario, often referred to as the singularity, is a point where machines become so advanced that they can improve themselves without human intervention. At that point, humans could lose control of AI, and the consequences could be catastrophic. Harari cautions that we need to think carefully about how we develop and regulate AI to ensure that it remains a tool for human benefit, rather than a threat to our existence. Harari closes Nexus by addressing a question that has haunted humanity for centuries. What is the meaning of life? In a world increasingly dominated by technology, this question has taken on new urgency. Harari argues that as machines take over more of our task, humans will need to find new ways to define their purpose. One of the central theme in this section is the concept of upgrading humanity. Harari explains that many technologists believe we are on the verge of transcending our biological limitations through technology. Whether it's through genetic modification, brain-computer interfaces, or even digital immortality, these technologies offer the promise of a future where humans are no longer bound by the constraints of our physical bodies. But Harari cautions that this quest for technological transcendence could have unintended consequences. For one, it could exacerbate existing inequalities as only the wealthiest individuals would have access to these enhancements. More fundamentally, Harari questions whether upgrading ourselves through technology will truly lead to a better life. He argues that throughout history, humans have often sought meaning through things that technology cannot provide. Relationships, art, spirituality, and a connection to the natural world. Harari also addresses the rise of virtual reality and other immersive technologies, which promise to offer new ways of experiencing life. While these technologies can provide entertainment and escape, Harari warns that they could also contribute to a growing sense of disconnection from reality. If people spend more time in virtual worlds than in the real one, will they lose touch with what it means to be human? In his conclusion, Harari calls for a renewed focus on the things that make life truly meaningful. Our relationships with others, our pursuit of knowledge and creativity, and our connection to the world around us. He argues that as we navigate the challenges of the 21st century, we must be careful not to lose sight of these timeless sources of meaning. And that wraps up our deep dive into Nexus by Yuval Noah Harari. Thank you so much for listening and joining us. If you enjoyed the audiobook, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more book summaries that help you expand your mind. Drop a comment below to let us know which book you'd like us to explore next and we'll consider it for our upcoming episodes. We look forward to bringing you more valuable content right here on Page by Page. Until next time, keep learning and growing.